Welcome to Emma Account Setup for Providers Part 1. Here is a list of acronyms and their meanings to reference during the presentation. Today we will cover Part 1, Business Accounts. We will cover the creation of a business account, which only one person from the business will need to create, and we will discuss creating an account and adding users to the business account. Please note that these webinars are not applicable to eligible private school users. Eligible private schools are approved for scholarships by the Florida Department of Education. Their students attend a physical campus for full-time in-person enrollment. Eligible private schools can participate in the marketplace, but it will be through their school accounts and training will come separately. Who will create a business provider account? You will create a business account if you are the owner operator of a business that will bill for services or contract with or employ service providers whose services to students will be payable to your business. For example, you're the owner, accountant, business manager for a business, or you run your own tutoring business and will be invoicing clients yourself. In other words, you will not be linking your services to another business that pays you. Who will create a personal provider account? You will create a personal provider account if you have a credential or license that qualifies you to provide services and are employed by or contract with a business account on the provider marketplace. A personal account will not receive payment. Direct payment will be made to the associated business provider account. Individuals who will create a personal provider account must provide the required documentation based on service type to be approved. Please check the required documents, which may be found on our resource website. Also note, we will be covering the personal provider account in part two and part three of this webinar. And last but not least, who will create a combined account? You will create a combined personal and business account if you meet the criteria above for creating a business account and have a credential or license that qualifies you to provide services. This is the only instance when two accounts will fall under the same login name. If you are a business owner who only employs other providers and do not provide services yourself, you do not need to create a personal account. Part one, business accounts. Only one person from the business will need to create a business account. Let's get started. First, let's navigate to sufs.org backslash Emma Providers. Make sure to get that S at the end. To create an Emma account, you're gonna click on the sign up link located under the login bar. For added security, we will send a one-time password to your email. Please enter a valid email address and verify the code. Ensure that the email address is unique and has not already been utilized by a provider, guardian, or school. All user email addresses must be unique. Please note that if you already have an Emma account, you can log in and wait until we get to the business account setup. If you've forgotten your username or password, please click forgot username to retrieve your username or forgot password to reset your password. An email will be sent to you to reset your login information. Once you receive the verification code via email, please be sure to enter the code exactly as listed. If the email verification code takes longer than three minutes, have the provider hit the resend verification code. Sometimes the first one took almost 10 minutes, but when the resend button was clicked on again, the resend came in under a minute. Once the code is confirmed, you'll be brought to the account creation page. Service providers refer to individuals or organizations who are authorized to offer services to scholarship students. Please make sure you select the proper account type. There are two drop-down options under account type. To create a provider account, you must select the service provider as the account type. Once you complete your security questions, please click continue to move forward. Please note that once security questions are created, they cannot be altered. As a business administrator, owner, 
or the business representative, you must create a business account. All personal provider accounts will be created after the business account is created. If you are a business administrator owner or acting on behalf of a business owner, you will need to create a business account. Only one person from the business needs to create an account for now. Later in the presentations, we will explain how to add additional employees with accounting and billing permissions to the business account. So for now, one person should create one business account. Once you select business account, you'll be directed to create your business profile. Please be aware that the legal business name and advertise name displayed on your business profile in Emma represent your business name. The advertised name is how families refer to your business, while the legal business name is the name registered with the IRS. We understand that this may not be your actual legal name. Please utilize the description field to provide a detailed description of your business. Apart from a basic business overview, this field can also be utilized to highlight any additional services your business offers and can be considered for parents browsing the marketplace. The description field is an area to highlight the area of focus of your business. Please note before the provider can enter their direct pay information, they will have to click save on the business profile. After you save your business profile, you'll be prompted to log out and log back in. Once doing so, you'll encounter the two-step verification. The phone number used for two-step verification must be multi-factor authentication compatible. This means the number used must be able to receive a code through a text or call. Please make sure to enter the correct information here to avoid MFA issues in EMMA. In order to complete your business account setup, you will automatically be logged out when you click continue and will need to log back in using your same credentials. Once you've logged back in, the setup checklist will appear. Please follow the checklist on your business account dashboard to complete your account setup. Your business profile has been completed as indicated by the blue check mark. Continue by clicking the arrow adjacent to the add payment method section. In this section, you can enter your banking information to receive payments directly into your bank account with parental approval. Please note, if your banking information changes at any time, you will have limited access to the system until the banking information is corrected. Who will create direct pay? Business account users, including added users only. Personal providers will not set up direct pay. When entering payment information, providers must select whether they are an individual or a business and provide basic contact information. Please ensure that the information you enter here matches the details the IRS has on file for your business. Additionally, steps one through three must also match this information to ensure that the banking is valid, and we will discuss that momentarily. After the provider enters their address information, you will have to enter their payment method. If changes are made to this section, it will impact your banking information and tax forms. You must complete the digital W-9 form and ensure that the information you provide matches what the IRS has on file. Complete the electronic W-9 tax form and electronically sign it. Select Next. If an individual is serving under a business, they will not come across this step while creating a personal provider account. If you are an individual providing services and do not have an EIN number, please enter your social security number where indicated. Be consistent and use the same names and addresses for each set of fields as applicable. Once you click on next and the system gives you the done message, please wait until you see the green valid banner. It may take up to 24 hours so please do not make any changes until you have allotted that time to pass. After you see the green valid banner, you can close the box. Your profile page will now show that it has been updated to reflect the valid status. However, please keep in mind that your information 
still needs to be validated by the IRS, which may take up to 24 hours. Now it is time to complete the terms and conditions. Please read and review the terms and conditions. Once in agreement, check each box at the bottom of the page, you will be required to type your name and sign electronically. Once you have signed, click Submit. After you complete the terms and conditions, you will be returned to your business profile. Navigate back to the business dashboard to continue through the checklist. Now we are ready to add locations. Here you will have an opportunity to list your business locations with their address, phone number, and times of operation. Let's add some locations. Service offerings allow you to view the locations and offerings associated with your business. You will be required to add locations and services here. Adding services is simple. First, the provider will need to add a location, which includes information for the location and the service. Parents won't be able to find a business without a location in the marketplace. Service offerings allows you to view the locations and offerings associated with your business. Under locations, the business will enter the following. Physical address, contact information, services offered, session type, hours of operation. If you have multiple locations, the contact information and email should be specific to that location. This should reflect your business hours, the times in which you wish parents to be able to contact you. Now, please note this is not a scheduler. Therefore, this tool cannot be used by parents to make appointments in the EMMA system. Now that you've added your location, you can add your services. Add any services that you would like to offer, FESUA, FESEO, FTC, and FTC PEP families as an authorized use of their scholarship funds. Please note, this is solely for the FESUA, PEP, FTC, and FESEO programs at this time, not for the New World Scholarship accounts. Here you will have to list each of the services they provide. These service offerings are tied to locations. You may enter more than one location. However, each location must be under the same tax ID and bank account for invoicing purposes. Under service category, select the eligible category that aligns with your area of expertise or certification. Under specialized services, ABA therapy, speech language pathology, Occupational therapy, physical therapy, and listening and spoken language specialists have their own drop downs signified by the acronym. The following categories are included under the specialized services option that does not have an acronym. They do not have their own drop down but are captured under the generic specialized services category Vision Therapy, Path International Certified Horse Therapy Centers, Music Therapy art therapy services, psychotherapy, or counseling services. To assist our provider relations team, please upload documents that support your eligibility to provide the specific services selected. It would be most helpful to have the document names reflect what they demonstrate, for example, license, certification, or diploma. Please ensure that the documents are not password protected. Select the service category, service type, add rate or activity, and add a brief description. Choose the location or locations where these services will take place and upload supporting documentation. You may repeat these actions for as many service categories that need to be entered. To include more services, simply click on the Add a Service Offering button. To add contacts and users, start by returning to the business profile and accessing the contacts and users tab. Contacts do not have their own login credentials. Users will receive an email from Emma platform with a unique link to create their own login credentials. Important tip, the email address and phone number for each contact and user should be unique to that individual. 
the system will not allow multiple individuals to utilize the same contact information. Adding a new contact is simple. Click on the blue new button and fields will appear below. First name, last name, email and contact type. Examples would be primary school or finance contact. To add a new user, click on the blue new button. The following information will be required for each new user. First name, last name, work email, work number. After entering the user's information, click on the green check mark to save. If you need to delete the user, click on the red X. Users need unique email addresses, including if they have a guardian account and they may not use duplicate numbers. Once a user is added, they will receive the following email to create an account from noreply at subs.org. They will need to create a unique user ID and password to access Emma. After completing the steps to create their account, they will receive a confirmation screen that states that they have successfully created an account. In the event that you do not receive the email, please make sure to check your spam or junk folder. Once a new user receives an emailed invitation, they will click the link in the email to create their account. From here, they will choose a unique username, create a password and security questions, return to the login, and then set up their MFA. Remember, all users have the same access and permissions in Emma. The new users will see the profile you've already created. The following categories of providers do not need personal provider accounts. Approved VPK, school readiness providers, horse therapy providers, home education program providers, Florida Department of Education approved online course providers, Florida Department of Education approved virtual instruction providers, and public school or school districts approved by the Florida Department of Education. Providers in these categories are approved as a business and will not need employees to provide proof of their credentials. The following categories of providers do need personal provider accounts. Specialized therapy, ABA, SLP, OT, and PT. Choice navigators, tutoring services, music and art therapy, elective or enrichment providers, job coaches. Providers in these categories will need employees to provide proof of their credentials through their personal provider accounts, which will be covered in part two. If you are a business user and you will not be providing services yourself, pause here and do not proceed to part two of this series. However, if you are a business user providing services as an individual provider, you will need to proceed to part two of this series to create an individual service account. Thank you for joining us for part one of the Emma Account Setup for Providers series.